can, okay, so um, this is the leather that I bought. I get it from Tandy's Leather. It is a seven to nine ounce double shoulder. They come in pretty big pieces. This one is about 14 square feet, okay? One, one side's pretty straight, the other side's kind of raggedy, and you don't want any holes in the middle because you're gonna be cutting a lot out of the center of that. Um, I already put a stain on there on one of them, and I kind of left a spot on this one to show you how it's done. I just use a regular kitchen sponge, and then I use the water dye on these because a lot of times I'm outside in the sun. If it's oil, then it'll evaporate unevenly, but the water seems to, over two coats, look pretty good, and it gives you a little bit more time with it than the, than the oil does. On smaller, nice, pretty pieces, oil would be the, the ideal way to go if you're making like a purse or something so that it's really consistent. You can go back and polish it up really well. These water bases go on okay. I feel like you have a little more time with them. So I just spread it out with a sponge. I don't care if I get a little dirty. I like to wear my black scrubs. So if I do get black on my clothing, it's not too disappointing. I turn my scrubs inside out and you know I can still wear them to work if I need to in a pinch. So that's pretty much it. You don't have to worry about if it's totally consistent in all the spots. If there are some spots that are a little bit darker than others, when you put your second coat on, it should fill in and you won't be able to see the imperfections as much. See, this piece of leather has been out in the sun now for about 15 minutes and it is hot to the touch almost. It's, it's pretty warm, so this, this dye is gonna dry really quickly. You can see that it's already almost dry over here where I started. So I'm going to switch these out and put a second coat on this one, okay? And then we'll, I'll show you how to mark them off and then we'll cut some. So that's the basically what kind of leather. It is double shoulder, veggie tan. It's the seven to nine ounce. You want a pretty straight side on the top. This is the backbone of a piece of leather. This is kind of like the, the legs or whatever, the, the belly and stuff. That side um, is gonna be really inconsistent. So don't worry about that. You want a good straight back because that's where you'll pull all your measurements off of and we'll work that way. I'll show you when we get to the cutting. But anyway, double shoulders, seven to eight ounce veggie tan. Okay, now that we have it dyed and it's completely dry, you can see it's a little streaky. That's okay because what, the size of pieces that we're using, you really won't see it because the pieces of leather are so small so um, flip it over you'll see that this is the undyed side this is the side um, that is called the suede I used to dye them black but it just is a waste of, of ink really when you once they're folded and you have a, an undyed interior on these frogs it looks pretty nice but it also doesn't stain the wood because a lot of times you have somebody with a really nice piece of oak that they're gonna put in this in this frog, and if the stain is on there, if the oak isn't isn't stained, it isn't dyed anything, it's just raw, they're gonna take it home and do something special with it or whatever. If there's black on this, it's gonna rub all over that and it's really hard to get out. You have to like sand it out of the oak. You can, it won't just wipe off. So I've decided I just don't stain the interior, just the exterior. It's all around better and it saves you time and money. Now, this is my template that I use to mark the leather. And because it's, it's a pretty basic little J shape, you're gonna get about, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 out of this one piece of leather. But the idea is to try and stack them as closely, to, as closely together as you can so that um, you waste as little leather as possible. So you're gonna wanna kind of stack them next to each other like this. I want this to be my straight line if I can. So let me see how this will work out. I'm just gonna map one out and move on to the next one. It's also been a while since I've cut a, a hide aside, so um, there we go. You see, now this line is gonna line up. We're just gonna keep laying them out as far as we can down this way. If this line curves a little bit, just you wanna save as much leather as possible. The line doesn't have to be totally straight. It's just easier to cut when you have more straight lines. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and map this out and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to cut it. All right. All right, now I just realized when we laid this one out, this one's pretty good, but the one I did before this, um, I had my template going in the wrong direction. So that means one side's blonde and it's the suede side and that's the interior of the frog. The outside is black and that is the exterior of the frog. 
since it's an L shape, it matters which way it goes down. Because if you have it facing the wrong way, the black won't um, fold so that it's left or right handed. We want it to be right handed so it sits on the left side of the body. That being said, just be mindful when you lay it down. Um, and if it helps, it kind of looks like an F when you're looking at it from the bottom. All right, so then I like to cut them into five uh, parts, depending on if I if I had that many. Sorry, I stutter when I'm thinking on this on the spot. There you go. So again, if you have a nice sharp knife and you're cutting on top of this piece of glass, it's going to be really easy. Um, I tried to keep my uh, lines as long as, as I could because it makes it much easier to cut more out quicker if they are as straight lines. So like if you have a bunch of jagged edges, it just takes forever to cut and that time, you know, is money. And you want to put as much, a little effort as, into this as possible for your time and all that. So one, two, three, four, five, cut that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. The only reason I do that is it makes it easier later to count them. Before I'm completely finished cutting them all, I can tell if I have, you know, the number that I need or if I need to keep making more. So, on this rat, uh, jagged edge, I just like to cut as close as I can across the top, as close as, close as I can to the tip. And leave that little triangle there. That one that's a little off. And you're gonna end up with a lot of nice big pieces for scrap for if you want to make armor or you know someone that does, that's good stuff. One, two, three, five. Because this is, like I said, seven to nine ounce leather is perfect for armor. And it, it tools well, it's great. So, you know, I'm not going to make you finish watching me cut all this out. So we'll, we'll um, after they're all cut into little individual frogs, I'll show you the next step. But that's basically what you do. You cut them from this, cut them down again, and then you'll have a stack of probably, I'm, I'm guessing, a, a little over 100 of these frogs. Um, and then I'll show you what the next step is involved with shaping them. Okay, so now that we've got all the frogs cut out, this is what the finishing product is supposed to look like, okay? So it hangs on the left hand side of the kit, it has a downward slope so that when your weapon or whatever goes in it, it kind of hangs sideways but the gravity keeps it in place. A few tools that you're going to need, this is what I like to use. I have a big piece of granite, I have a cutting board, I have a small anvil that's for setting rivets, you can get this from Tandy's. Now this is a belt cutter for leather, cuts a long um, belt shape, that's what this shape is. Okay, this is one inch. I use one inch because our straps are 5 8 inch. That gives you a little bit of wiggle room on top um, to, to slide them in and they can move around pretty easily. Okay, and you're also going to need to get a beveler, a leather beveler. This comes in four different sizes. Um, this one is the uh, number two, so it goes one, two, three, or four. This one's number two, and it cuts pretty good on th this size leather. So now, right now, the leather has, hasn't been beveled. And this is what it looks like when it has been. You can see a little bit of the white has, has been exposed. I really like that look. It makes it look clean. Also, a lot of the products that they sell at Burnt Mountain Crafts, that's what um, are going to go inside of these, those, those uh, wooden swords, they are all beveled as well. So it kind of matches, kind of rhymes, you know. Everything has a little bevel. And they look really nice next to each other. So you just go around all the edges and you give it a little bit of a bevel. Uh, you're going to take your one inch belt hole cutter now i like to use a mallet with a rubber thing or plastic instead of um, metal because metal is really hard on the edges of your tools and you'll end up banging them up really quickly and going through those things really fast like this tool right here is probably 35 dollars by itself so if you break one a week that's a lot to try and keep up with. It should last you all year if you get a good one. Okay, so now I just punched a hole for my rivets. Just using a regular eighth inch um, hole punch. 
And now I use the medium rivets. They come, I buy them a thousand at a time, and they come separated. These are the males, and these are the females, okay? Medium rivets are just about perfect for this thickness of leather when you double it. So it's like seven, nine against each other. You come up with about probably close to a half an inch there of leather that you're going through. And then you put your male through, and then you put your female on the back. And then you're going to need a nice big rivet setter. Um, they come for each size rivets. Each, each rivet has its own setter. So just the, according to, you know, if you get your medium rivets, get the medium rivet setter. Pop it down. Boom. So that's one frog. And once you get going, it doesn't take very long. You should be able to make about 100 of them in an hour. Okay, so now we're going to make the belts. This is garment leather I get from frog jelly leather. Um, usually, I would normally I would get like a black, but um, this green was on sale and it's super dark. You can't even tell. I was thinking when it came in that I might even have to stain it again because I have all that black um, stain. But this this green is totally dark enough. So I think that this is called the Kelly green. It may even be Forest, but I think it's Kelly. And then um, you're going to need a really good carpet cutter, or you know, this is a, for carpet knives. I use this DeWalt one because it has a pretty comfortable grip, and it's easy to change the blades. And then I got, I'll get a pack of blades, hundreds of them at a time, because you're really going to be <clears throat> changing out these blades like crazy. And every time I start, I put a new blade in, even if, you know, I've only used it three or four times. If it's been sitting for a couple of days, I just put a new blade in. These blades cost nothing. If you buy them by a, a hundred of them at a time, I just gotta get this to line up. Boom, okay. Get a hundred of them at a time, and as soon as they stop cutting very well, you flip them over, and if uh, you use it one on each of either side and it's not cutting very, very well, then replace it, replace it like crazy, because it costs nothing, man. A hundred of them are like, you know, eight bucks or something. So here is a piece of glass. I use, I usually cut on glass when I'm cutting with leather. You'll be surprised at how far your knife will go on glass. If you're cutting on this plastic top, it'll, your knife, you know, twice and your knife is done. And then if you use one of those hard plastic cutting boards that you see in your kitchen, that'll run that knife down pretty quickly too. And it's hard to cut a good, clean, straight line on a rough surface like that. So I like to use glass. This is just a big, um, there a piece of glass that's probably, you know, less than a quarter of an inch thick. It's pretty heavy. You can put a lot of weight on glass before it breaks. It's not that bad. And then my um, D rings that I like to use on these belts are the five eighths. So I want to cut my straps to about five eighths inch wide. And I already um, sheared off one corner so we have a nice straight side to, to start with and the top this is the uh, the spine side it's pretty straight and then I'm just gonna go eighth inch until I run out of leather we'll see how many we get um, usually one side uh, it's probably about 15 square feet 14 15 square feet and they run about 30 bucks maybe 25 30 bucks from frog jelly leather and uh, anyway you should be able to get 50 plus belts out of it all right, so that's it. Okay, so you want to cut them at 5 8 inch with a nice sharp blade. Look at that, it cuts so easy. You want to cut a nice straight line. It's okay if it's not perfectly consistent because these are kids' belts, and a lot of times they're wearing costumes and stuff too, so it gives it a handmade look. You don't want it to be jagged at all. If you can keep the knife on the, on the cutting board the whole way through, then you get a good straight line. And then I usually leave them connected at the top until I have 10 and then I'll cut off a batch of 10 at a time, okay? So that's one, if you, get, if you do this for a while, you get pretty good at it. Two. And so on, until you have 10. Okay, so now we're gonna put the belts together for the frogs, so what we need are leather straps. I've. Um, cut out a bunch of straps, remember, before, and there's 10 on every um, belt or piece, so you cut them off with scissors, and as you go, you know, when you run out of those, you have 10, so there's one, and these are the 5 eighths inch D-rings, 
So you want the rivet that we're about to put in to be as tight as you can against those D-rings. So we're going to put this hole punch really close. We're going to put in two D-rings and then make a hole very tight against those D-rings for these little guys. Now these are the smallest of the rivets you can buy in bulk. They're the smalls. And so there's only three sizes. There's little, medium, and large. This is little. This is the small one. And if you buy them by the thousand, they separate the males from the females. And I always say, go through with the male, female on top. It, it really doesn't matter. A lot of people have different ideas about that, but I think it holds together better that way with the male going through, female on top, strike it down, and see, that should be tight, and see how tight that is, where the, uh, the D-rings don't move around a whole lot, that's good. That's good, that's what you want, because we're gonna, we're gonna now thread it through this uh, frog. So you go in from the front, out through the back, and then you want the, the belt to be on your left hand side, so left to right, like you're reading a book, left to right, in through the front, out through the back, like this. And then always pull it all the way up to the front. So when you're selling it, you want it to hang with where all the frogs are really close to the top and these hang really loose. Now, that is a right-handed one. So you see how I went through the, uh, through the front on the left and then back? Now, if I wanted a left-handed one, I need a new um, piece of leather. And I always find the bigger part of the, see I'm like, there's a part of the leather that's really weird and then there's another part of the leather that's pretty square. I'm gonna start with the square side, that's where I'm gonna put my ribbons, or my, uh, my D-rings and my ribbons. Because you can always trim the other side later. And a lot of kids are bigger than what they buy, so you might be able to just trim it on the sales floor, you know? So there's not a whole lot of extra stuff. Leather just hanging down and they run around. So again, um, I'm gonna put my rivet through the back, or through the front really, and then come through the back. The male, and then the female rides on top. I like to use my anvil. I think about acne. Acne? Acne? Acme. Anyway, so you see how tight that is? So you don't want to have a bunch of room there with the where the D rings um, they should line up because later when they put the belt on they're gonna run through and tighten that up, right? So you want your, your D's to be as close as possible. Now we're gonna make a left-handed one. So instead of going through before we went, you know, through like we're reading, this time we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna go from right to left, always through the front and back, and then through the front again. So you want the leather to hide the rest of that, right? And now this is, this is a left-handed. Okay. So we made about 80 of them, and I don't, I don't want you to watch me make 80 of them, but, um, Anyway, that's how you put a ribbon in the leather, and then you, you want to make sure that your D-rings are really tight here in the, in the beginning. Um, that's the most important thing for your belts, because um, later, if it starts to stretch and you lose your rivet, it's because your D-rings aren't really tight. If, they're, if they start to fight against each other, then they're going to pull that rivet out. So you want it to be as close together, and you want that rivet to be as close together as possible and as tight as possible, because the leather will eventually start to wear out and stretch under that rivet but if it's close it won't so that's what you do and then when you put it on a kid you put it through both d-rings right and then you separate the d's and then you go over the first one and under the second one just like a boy scout belt so they just they tighten up doesn't matter how big the kid is um, they'll it'll always fit and they can use that belt later for something. They can take the frog off and use the belt for their pants at high school or whatever, if they get that far. Whatever. Anyway, so that's it.